Hi, I'm Janice Switlow and today I want to touch upon uh, the prevalence of Indigenous nationals in jail, uh, in Canadian jails. And I want to read from this book by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, now it's set in an American example, but it absolutely translates to the situation in Canada. And um, that is, it pertains to how as humans we make snap judgments and snap decisions. Uh, and it's often we're not a, aware of it, um, but it happens. And it explains the problem this causes for, in our example, Indigenous nationals dealing with the criminal justice system. So, for example, it says, let me give you an example. One of the striking characteristics of the criminal justice system in the United States is how much more likely blacks are to be arrested and convicted and imprisoned for crimes than whites are. I'm not talking here about racial differences in overall crime rates. What I'm talking about is this. If, for example, a white man and a black man are charged with the identical drug-related crime, the black man is far more likely than the white man to go to jail. How much more likely? Here is an excerpt from a recent report by the nonprofit group Human Rights Watch. Quote, nationwide, the rate of drug admissions to state prison for black men is 13 times greater than the rate for white men. In 10 states, black men are sent to state prison on drug charges at rates that are 26 to 57 times greater than those of white men in the same state. In Illinois, for example, the state with the highest rate of black male drug offender admissions to prison, a black man is 57 times more likely to be sent to prison on drug charges than a white man. These are extraordinary numbers. This is no different from what Ian Aries found when he did his study on the way black men were treated by car salesmen in Chicago. Basically, it said that uh, uh, that study showed that if you were black, you were given the worst deal. Uh, in terms of the sales price offered uh, for a car, even and regardless of whether they were dressed nice and uh, and had good jobs, etc., it was the fact of of their appearance and their being black men. Um, put a black man inside the criminal justice system, the same thing happens. Justice is supposed to be blind; it isn't. So, what should we do? Well, we can spend the next 20 years trying to address the fundamental problem of unconscious racism in our society, or we can try in an immediate and practical way to fix the flawed snap decisions that distort the course of justice. What if the legal community took a page from the classical music world? Now, what this describes is when symphonies were um, auditioning uh, players of instruments, they found that it was considered, well, males were the better musicians. Uh, so you had very few women in orchestras. What they found, and this was not a result of actually being able to compare and decide that the men themselves were better performers. What they found is that when they screened the auditioners so that the, um, those selecting did not know if they were male or female playing, that a whole bunch of women were actually found to be the better performers. And so now you have this problem resolved in the music industry, and that's what they're speaking about. Now, the, the problem is, you know, saying, well, you know, then, and he proposed this to, he says, I gave a talk at Harvard Law School a few months ago and laid out this idea to a group of some of the country's brightest young minds. I thought they would be skeptical, but they weren't. Even though many raise legitimate concerns about the practicality of the idea or about just how much difference it would make in the end, there seemed to be little disagreement with the idea that we have to do something to reduce the shameful disparity in the way we treat people in the legal system based on the color of their skin. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a hard one. And it's not enough to just say, well, it's a matter of racism and how do we address that? We have a country here, Canada, that continues to build upon the doctrine of discovery. To, continues to have judges that are quite content to say, um, you know, that um, in courts they're able to say, well, you know, they weren't fully human. You know, they weren't in societies. They had no law. 
Um, they, you know, uh, they're not like us, you know, because they look different and they practice a different religion, and different spirituality. So this is a fundamental problem and, and what we're seeing is a result of so many indigenous nationals being jailed. My own experience when I've gone in to see um, uh, and meet with an indigenous uh, defendant uh, accused, um, you know, what would I see? I would see that other inmates would be in the general reception area where they could physically be in the same room with their visitors but yet every indigenous man in this particular case that I'm thinking of um, was behind you know in a glassed in um, cubicle you know phone booth side with with their loved ones on the other side of the glass wall why not because of of them being more uh, violent offenders. In fact, when I specifically asked, you know, what did they do? Uh, it was giggles, you know, and oh, well, yeah, you know, and these were the most minor of offenses, yet they were segregated in that way. Uh, how many more times are they placed in the hole because they're seen as in this snap judgment and this unconscious racism says these are dangerous people, right? Because of what? Cowboys and Indians, you know, um, you know, the pardon me, but you know, they'll scalp me kind of thing. They are more dangerous. These are fundamentals in the core of many people who would say I'm not racist. It's there. And Canada needs to, sh the politicians, they need to take the lead. They need to stop setting the example to say it's okay to treat, treat Indigenous nationals as subhuman. You need to, we need to clean up the law, we need to clean up our perceptions, because until we do that, nothing's going to change. We're going to still have this problem of people being incarcerated when they ought not to be. And that's all I have to say.